Okay, yes. We are live. We are live. Yes, we are live. Awesome. <laughs> Great, sir. Awesome. Awesome. So, once again, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me on the show. Yeah. Hello, hello, everyone. Are you watching? If you are watching, say hello. I have with me Mr. Patrick Mwakogu. Yes, you I got, practiced that name very you, well. I you, wanted to... <laughs> you got the How did you get hey! that? I wanted to make sure that I don't mother the name because I know it's always, I don't always like it too when they don't call my name well. So yeah. I'm always careful, you know, to make sure that people get the name well as well. So I'm so mm. grateful to have you on the show. Thank you. It's a big honor, a big privilege. I'm 100% sure that mm, if I if I went through the normal route, I'll still be on the queue. Mm. But, <laughs> but thank God for the underground connections. So massive shout out to um, Oluni Onikwede. Awesome. <laughs> Tell them he's your husband now. Yeah. Eh? Tell them he's your husband. Yes, <laughs> to like I call him. People say I call him massive. I'm calling my brother. Yes, I call him Neyo. So shout out to Neyo for making this possible. Yeah. Big, big, massive shout out to him. Thank you, Mr. Patrick. It's amazing to have you on the show. It's an honor. It's a privilege. And I want to say thank you, sir. Thank you. This is on the records that I owe you. I owe you one. <laughs> I will hold you to that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't you. mind. Thank I don't you. mind. Yeah, thank you, thank you so um, for it's my honor to be here as well. And um, I'm I'm happy and glad. Um, you call your show a baby show, but like uh, the Bible will always tell us, never forget the days of humble beginnings. Yeah. And what we are here to do. One of the things I've learned in my life journey is that as we go up, as much as we can, carry as many people up as you can. So if this is my little way of yeah. helping take your show up, more than happy Thank to you. do that. And I'm well. extremely grateful. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm thankful and I'm grateful for that. Thank and you. of course, um, they need to know as well the connection that your husband was in one of the programs we facilitated for the company yes. he works for. And like I mentioned to you when you called me last week, that he literally fell in love with me. As yes, he did. He and, did. And, and our program. He never stopped talking about you. So while you were busy trying to explain, justify why I should come on your program, the, the moment you mentioned his name and I said, who was that? He said me. I'm like, you didn't need to explain anything anymore. So we give this to Nia. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Neyo. So that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Bosa for Neyo. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Can I can I can I boast a little that I'm not um Mr. Patrick is my first guest all the way from you know from Obodo Ibu, all the way. So um um we are we are how do they say the ministry is going bigger? We are getting wider. Yeah, you, you, something you said at the beginning, and most people don't know me. Uh it's the Patrick LinkedIn that they know. They know uh, yeah. now that you've let out the bag, they may also don't know that I spend half of my time outside of Nigeria. So mm -hmm. I live abroad, I work in Nigeria. That's how I like to introduce myself. <laughs> and, I like um, that. Yeah, and I find myself traveling in and out of Nigeria at least six times in a year. That's a lot of travels. Yes, um, that is. But it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And just to further um, demystify myself, I have decided not to come on suit and tie. So you <laughs> see me like my teenage son. I have a son who is 14 my only okay. son um okay. so i'm trying to become like him so i'm very oh, so what what do we call you now is it do you have a do you have a, a, a nickname you should have uh, a nickname well i i have but i do you think i should tell tell your your, your you know we are trying to know a part of you many people don't know okay so my family has a business name called okay. kogos k-o-g-o-s Okay, cool. So everyone that knows my family, everyone in my house, everyone, my mom, my dad, of blessed memory, my siblings, everyone is called Kogos. Kogos. So when someone calls me Kogos, I tell that you know that the person knows you, you well. Know, you know what I mean? You know yeah. me back home. That's what it is. Mm. So, That's yeah. fantastic. And That's part fantastic. of the demystication, my mom has got six of us boys. Now Whoa. men. And I'm number four. No, 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 please, please, Mr. Patrick, please let's 
let's let's press the pause button. Yeah. Your mom, please tell, please say her name because we need to give her a standing ovation. You have to because partly the reason I'm here. My mom retired at age fifty four at a school mm. principal. By the time she turned 64, I mean 54, she had worked for 35 years and retired as a school principal. Mm. So I probably took the teaching DNA from her. From her? Yeah, she Wait, started, she, she she started teaching at boys. 16. And then six of us boys are men now, and I'm number four. So not a girl six, in the house. I'm trying to think. I have, I have two boys, and I, I know I what know. I do. I to replace... Do you, do you well, do? Never you mind. Do? Women of the of those days, I think they are stronger than our wives and uh, today. I, I, well, no, no, no. No, I don't. I don't no, agree. No, I don't no harm meant. They even had more support system than now. I, I, I hope you know. Well, I'm not sure how many women today can go through the 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 journey of having six children. That's a hundred feet. Yeah. See, the so, demand is so is so is so high right now, and I don't want to imagine. That I have to go and deal with six toddlers. So if you're looking, anyone watching and you need an uncle, I can lend you one. I have six, five siblings. Eh? <laughs> That's fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. We give Bosa to mommy. That's an amazing job. Oh, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sure she's a proud, she's a proud mom right, right now with the, with the way all of you turned out. Yeah, I, she, I, she, I, she, she, she turned 77 in April this year. Oh, oh happy birthday to her. Happy belated yeah. birthday to oh. her. She's she's all, all those us, um the ones we call unsung heroes. Yeah. Great thing. Yeah, so I'm ready for you. So you let me know how you like us. Okay, approach. please go ahead. I've, I've introduced you, Mister. I don't want to say, you know, the absent advert and a publicity. Mister hmm. Patrick Wakogo is the country director of the. Ah, my husband said that that name. That it's name okay. means power. Let me help you with it. So most of us Nigerians, again, know how meant, um, can't, we don't pronounce it really well. So exactly. this is an opportunity to pronounce it. It's pronounced Del Carnegie. Okay, Del most, Carnegie. Yes. Yeah, most people pronounce it Del I went Carnegie. online, I actually went online to get the pronunciation. So most people call it Carnegie. So it's not yeah, Carnegie. Carnegie. It's pronounced yeah. Car Carnegie, Del Carnegie. Carnegie. Yeah. I'll just be avoiding it, don't worry. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my lesson number one. Thank you. Thank Any, you. Lesson number one is that how to pronounce the name. Not just the name. Anything that you want to conquer, you don't run away, you confront Probably. it. Yes, yeah, true. So true. if you need to learn how to pronounce Dale Carnegie, is to practice pronouncing Dale Carnegie. Well, it sounds very nice, Joe yeah. Carnegie. Just add a little swag to it. Yeah, so you have, it's an American name, so you've got to pronounce it the way Americans Americans will do. And the, Americans are known for swags. Yeah. The first rule of engagement, whether it's for networking or building connection, it's like uh, it's, it's, it's about knowing people's names. Uh, so Dale Carnegie, we have a list of 30 principles that we use to engage and make connections with people. And mm. principle number six says that that the a person's name is to that person the most important and the okay. sweetest sound in any language. I totally agree. So if I you do. wanted people to like you and you and it's very crucial, even in the digital age as we are, that if you wanted to build network and it's very crucial for success, it's one of the things we're going to talk about today. That forget that whole myth of self-made millionaires. Nobody makes themselves. Mm, mm, people mm. make you even if you manufacture mm. a product you're not going to buy your products people will have to buy your products mm. people will have to work for you so mm. I, I don't get it whoever you have become today there are people that added to that equity called Adeironke or Patrick I True. mentioned my mom who invested yes. in the school that I attended yes I paid school fees yes absolutely mm. but mm. if I went to rubbish school I, I wouldn't be here today True. yeah so we've got to understand as well that you can make yourself. Yes, you have your role to play. Mm. But more, more than what you will do for yourself, the network around you is even more crucial mm. to how far you will go in life. So, and okay. one way to relate and connect with people quick and fast is a name. The name. The name. One year down the road, one month after, 
and I call them by their name. They're like, you remember my name? I say, yeah. yeah. That's what we teach at Dale Carnegie. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Lesson noted. Please, everyone, I'm sure my, my people are looking. See, they're even recommending already. Ronke said she has read the book you're talking about last year. Fantastic. Thank yeah. you, Ronke. And so, so it's, not, it's, not, it's not just about names. Anything yeah. that, that challenges you, Mm. The only way around it is not to run away, it's to confront it. Face it. Yes, whether confront it's fear it. of flying, whether mm. it's cracking algebra, mm. whether it's meeting new people or standing in front of a group to make a presentation, there's just absolutely one way around it is to confront, confront it. it. Mm. And the more you do that, the more the better. The, it just collapses and becomes almost like a piece of cake for you. Awesome, awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'll take you back to the to your mom that you mentioned that she has. I'm still like trying to get my head around it. Six boys. Yeah. As, yeah. I, when I see I'm going to, I'm not going to shake her hand. I'm going to kneel down and say, Mama, you have done, you have done absolutely well. You are doing well, like they say now. You are really doing well. So I want to ask you, please share with us your journey growing up. How was it for you? How it was, was it? it was tough. At times mm. I look at myself, irrecognized, not even not recognizable to myself, even to myself. Mm. I don't know if you can't even understand what that is. Uh, mm. So growing up, um, I had a brother. I think that even made it very challenging. My immediate senior, who was or who is a year and a half older than I am, was the typical scholar, every parent's dream. Mm. If, yeah, so all through primary school, we had six years, that was 18 terms. If mm. he came third, not more than twice. If he came second, not more than three times. The mm. rest of the period, he was top of his class. And then mm. you had beside him, next to him, a younger brother whose position in a class of 30 typically will be anywhere. Okay, so count like three from behind. So why <laughs> they counted for him? Yeah, From the front. <laughs> from the front. I came from the back. So my typical grade in class would be anywhere between the 24th to 26th in the class of 30. I can talk about it jokingly today, but trust me, it wasn't funny. All through childhood, I felt humiliated. I felt I had a very big sense of shame. My greatest moments were the last day in school of school. I just wanted to go home. And each time it was time to go back to school, it was more like, oh gosh, not again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was so shameful. I don't know what the schools do today in Nigeria. I remember or I know during my time that on the last day of school, we come to the assembly and they called forth the first, second, and the third. Mm -hmm. And as they are coming, they are asking the rest of them, will you not clap for them? So we are clapping for them, those that have taken the first three positions in class. Mm -hmm. It was quite a humiliating experience. That's just how I can explain it. Mm. Never look forward to going to school, mm. uh, you know, and then um, I had a largely uneventful childhood, let me put it that way. Mm. The only thing that you saw on my, and I'm not kidding anyone here, this is mm. a true life story. The only thing you saw in my report card, as we called it then, all of six years in primary school, and for largely all of my secondary edu school education, without fail, playful and dirty. Wow. I was a very playful child. Wow. And it was that bad. Mm -hmm. And from time to time, my mom would call me to one quiet corner and like, you know, what do you want to do with your life? But she was very understanding, or like my dad, uh, so each time my brother took first or second, he got a present. So all through my primary and secondary education, I never got anything. And that even further wasn't my case. And mm. that first experience I bring to the listeners today. For those of us who have children, mm. please understand that every one of us is different. Yeah. We have people who we call late starters or late boomers. I belong mm. in that category. So if you have a child who isn't doing well today, please, just like my mom did, don't write them off. Mm. My mom never wrote me off. Mm. My dad was the most impatient of persons. And I also will share with you the great things in spite of his impatience, the other yeah. great things that I, I took away from him, mm. or I took from him. 
So my mom never wrote me off, probably because she schooled abroad as well. She studied school management and administration. So she probably understood that not everyone will kick off fast. But the question really is how patient can a parent be that all of mm. primary school and much of secondary education, you had a child like me who you typically today we call a laggard mm. until my uh, until I was moved from Delta State to Lagos and I went to this glorious school. I always will say it and mm. That's your I know school. Okay, I know well. <laughs> yes. the Moral High School at the time. We were the starting student at the time. Mm -hmm. And at that time in 1988, the school had 80% or thereabout of its teachers who were Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. sure what it was they did differently, but with the benefit of hindsight, probably some of them understood that some of us were different. Yeah. And just in seven months of being there, they prepared me and I wrote my, as we say then, West African School Certificate exam. Mm -hmm. And I had in the class size or the school size of about 100 students, I had the second overall best result. Not in a class of 30. Yeah. In a class of 100. 100, yeah, fantastic. I had, so I was number two in mm. the entire school and I have never looked back. Mm. In university, top of my class, people knew me, not just in my department, in the entire faculty. People, I studied okay. economics, people in psychology, people in sociology, they all knew there was mm -hmm. some Patrick in economics who was a wonder kid. It Same was Patrick a, that was written, absolutely. playful, and dirty. Yes. It was so good that even as a university student, that was where my journey of knowledge industry began. I wrote handouts and sold to my classmates. Hmm. So for you are already things, an entrepreneur in school. I started in school. So hmm. I will summarize every a particular, let's say a course, let's say econometrics for those familiar with economics, or let's say economic policy. For those hmm. that were not, I don't want to say lazy, but those that were not studious enough, like people like me when I got to the university, I'll read all the text, summarize the major thing you needed if all you wanted was a C. So if you bought my handout, read it, understood it, you'll be good with a C. Hmm. Hmm. And that was where my entrepreneurial journey began in school. Hmm. I didn't make a first class. I got a 2-1, extremely good 2-1. I have three master's degree today. And that's been my journey. I then moved on after my university education. I went back after youth service without a job straight. I didn't go for a, I didn't go for a job. I went straight. My dad insisted I should go for my master's degree. So I went back to school, did a master's degree. Within five weeks of graduation from my master's, I got a job in a bank. And then um, worked. the whole idea was work. Uh, maybe I was at that point tired of people paying my uh, taking care of me, I wanted to work. Because my journey was always to get a PhD in economics, work for World Bank or IMF. But by the mm. time I got a job, trust me, the pay was good. <laughs> After 1998, when I got my first job in a bank, my salary was about 600,000 per annum. I'm not wow. So there's still some big money to some people. So wow. because yeah. I had a master's yeah. career at the time, uh, the, the management of the bank, I was the only young person in the bank that had a master's degree. Mm. And, the and, same topic that was written, playful and dirty. Yeah. <laughs> and awesome. the bank insists they, they got me to start from a level beyond my mix because of my master's degree. And the whole idea was to work for like two or three years, save up money and go abroad and do my doctorate in economics. Mm. Unfortunately, Money came. Any, there was no mentor, no career guidance. I got carried away with the money. Money. And I spent six and a half years in banking. Wow. I became a branch manager after four and a half years, about five years in banking. I was a manager. Life was good. I had official car. I had a driver. I had, but at some point I came to that realization that banking, as much as I was doing well, wasn't what I was cut out to do. 
And that's my lesson come back to today. You got to know what your purpose is and Mm. have the courage to live it. It may not always be the easiest thing to give away, give up a good job and then Mm. give up all the things that came with the job, the car, the driver, the secretary and everything. Even my mom that always supported me cried blue mother because Mm. how do you leave such a job just you want to chase your dream? But I did. So I went back to school to take up a second master's degree. And this time, just to come back in the, uh, to what it was I wanted to do with my life. And I studied at Manchester Business School Managerial Psychology. So that yeah. was what gave me first insight into psychology, human behavior, how yeah. you really can lift yourself and do. So a lot of the things that I've done up until that time in my life, I was able to find academic or theoretical explanation to yes, some of the yeah. things I've done. And I will talk about them at this section at some point as well, yeah. you know. And then did that, came back to Nigeria, started a training organization. We didn't really make, it wasn't commercially successful in 2007. So, not, mm. not because so you, we, had your, you had your setback too in yes, Nigeria. Yeah, mm. it didn't work. I left it for two years. Like the typical Lagos person, as we say, all my boys, we had to go and hustle. Hustle. Awesome. And then stock market was doing well at the time. So I had a, some investment in stock market. So I was comfortable. Real estate was doing well around the lucky houses. Some properties mm-hmm. you invested 5 million today. In less than one year, it became 10 million. So mm-hmm. in a three year period, I, I did not find the need to ever work for anybody or do any other thing. The money was good. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, really good. Mm-hmm. But it came at some point, I was making money, but there was still this emptiness inside. Emptiness. Mm-hmm. And I asked to myself that the reason I left my banking job wasn't to do real estate or stock investing. Mm-hmm. I left my banking job because I wanted to get into people development. Again, my, mm-hmm. my purpose in life was calling me back mm-hmm. and to be a knowledge worker. And then I decided I was going back to training and development. But I remember that we didn't do well. So we went back to why the drawing board mm. to why we did not, why we were not succeeding. Mm. And the thing I found was not because we didn't know what to do, we did not have a recognizable or reputable brand name. Brand. And that takes me to lesson number three. People mm-hmm. won't take you serious if your brand is not strong, whether as an individual or as a business. Mm-hmm. You've got mm. to invest in brand building. Mm. When people buzz me on LinkedIn for anything, the first thing I do is to check their profile. Profile, who they have? Who are they? If I'm mm. not really impressed, unfortunately, it may not be the kindest of things to do, but that's how life works. One mm. thing I tell people is that nobody wakes up every morning to decide that I'm today I'm going to look for someone to help. Nobody mm. does that. True, true. So you've got to ask yourself, what are the things I need to do in terms of brand building to make people stop and give me attention? Mm. Mm. I don't know if I'm communicating. Yes, you are. You You've have got to ask you yourself are. to say, if people clicked on my profile, would they stop or would they just move on? Mm. So and what I, what does it represent? What do you represent? Mm. Yeah. So I decided, you know what? I wasn't going to play on a local level. I was going to go international in terms of brand. So I went global to look for a global brand to bring to Nigeria in the my field, training and development. So I went after Dale Carnegie. Mm. It took one year. The first time I wrote to Dale Carnegie that I wanted to bring the brand to Nigeria, nobody listened to me. That's mm. lesson number four. Never give up. Again, I would mm. tell us when to give up and when not to give up. There are times you need to give up. Let me explain that. There's something the French call coup de sac. Coup de sac is a dead end. If something okay. is a dead end, please give it up fast. No matter how much you try. It's almost like you get to a close, like a street, a close. A close is a close. You couldn't walk yeah. past a close. That's a dead so end. How do you know? How do you know when it is a dead end? Good question. That's, I'm, I'm not sure if we'll have time to cover all of this because I don't know how much time we have for this session. But the we point have, we, is, have, we have 24 minutes more. How many minutes? 24. But okay. All continue. right. Okay. Yes. So the, the point is um, if you, hit a dead end, no matter how much you try, you can't crack it. Like if it, if it's not a thoroughfare, if it's a close, a street, yeah. you couldn't go through. 
that's a dead end. So mm. in life, there are certain things that are dead ends. For example, uh, let me give you a typical example. Um, no matter how much I try today, I could never become a world boxing champion anymore. Uh, okay. It's a dead end. It's not it a career I should because go Because it's beyond the desire. There's the age, the physical, the, the mental. I cannot, I cannot become a world. I can't become a soccer star anymore. Uh, no matter how much I love. So there's I've, no possibility I'm, that you can beat Igalu now. I've gone past the age to become, to take yeah. soccer as a profession. So mm -hmm. we need to understand that no matter, you know, when motivational speakers tell us um, things like follow your passion, and I'm saying that's okay. What mm -hmm. a passion does for you is that that's like a feel that will keep you going when the time gets tough. Tough, yeah. But passion will never substitute for skill. True. So, what? It yes, will never be a substitute for skill. Mm. So mm. no matter how passionate you are about yeah. something, if you can never build a skill in that area, you can never be successful. Mm. Mm. So mm. when something is a yeah. dead end, please give it up. Mm. Don't bother. Don't bother. Give it up and quickly too. In fact, it's a skill. Giving up becomes a skill in that regard. You don't I waste like your that. time. You don't waste your resources. Chasing yeah. a dead end. Mm. So it's not always a virtue never to give up. Mm. It's a virtue to give up dead ends quickly, mm. to go fast enough to. Fast about it. Yes, be fast about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. in the area where, so you don't give up because, so where do you not give up? You don't give up because something is difficult. Mm. Mm. In fact, you should be smiling and happy when something is difficult. It's it means difficult. that only very few people will crack it. And only if you will ascend and get to the yeah. top. Yeah. So you give up dead end, but don't give up things because they are difficult. So that mm. explains. So you ask yourself before you give up, am I giving up because it's difficult or am I giving up because this is a dead end? Dead end. There are two different things. There are two different things. Whether in marriage, whether in your career, in any aspect of your life, always be asking, is this a dead end or is this a difficult road? If it's mm -hmm. difficult, we always advise follow the less the road less traveled mm. because the end is a beautiful one. True. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That, mm. That, so we were follow talking the road less traveled yeah. because the end is a beautiful, beautiful one. one. Yeah. Don't I have always in my life since I recovered or rediscovered myself, I have always followed the road less traveled. I would never win any popularity contest if you conducted one. <laughs> I, I, I pretty much understand that. House, at work, I am not into the popularity game. I, mm, I, I follow, acceptance, to be accepted. I, I follow the path meant for me. Mm, All of mm. that. That's it. So, and that's yeah. why I went after Dale Carnegie. The first attempt, they wouldn't even respond. It bounced you. I kept going. Until mm. CEO saw my mail, and the CEO saw your name, your mail. Mail, yes, and asked someone in the EMEA region, Europe, Middle East, and Africa to attend to me. The wow. journey took one year. At some point, I had to one year, one to, year, one whole year, At one year for brought, you to for the mail to be activated. No, 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 no. to get Dale Carnegie to give me what I wanted. Oh my, oh my, you have yeah. to wait that long. At some point, I had to travel to Brussels, Belgium, to meet with the regional executive who was the first gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. When I sailed through, at some point, I was invited to New York to meet with the leadership team where I made the presentation. What made it compelling and very difficult at the time was that Nigeria wasn't listed as one of the countries that Dale Carnegie wanted to come to. Wow. Yeah. The so, most popular African nation. Yeah, at that time, they were already in about seven African countries. They were in South Africa. And they were not in Nigeria. Egypt, already in Egypt for 30 years. Whoa. Yeah. Dale Carnegie is a 108 year old company. Yes, I know. One way it is. I went on them. They were in South Africa. Dale Carnegie was in Egypt, in Tunisia, in Morocco, in Algeria, and um, Mauritius. Mauritius is not even up to Agege. At all. The one Mauritius of the smallest African nation. Yeah. Young people. Dale Carnegie yeah. was already. There. But of course, it's a well organized and well run company. Country. Yes. Also, the global firms, you know, have a, an mm. office or some yeah. in, in, yeah. in operations as well. 
Anyway, to call the long story short, I was able to convince them to come to Nigeria. And that takes me to lesson number four. It would really not matter what you know if you are not able to persuade people to give you what you want in life. Mm, mm. Communication, if you ask me today, will become on my list number one skill everyone needs to build. Communication is not just about speaking English. Whether you speak mm. English or, about, or you speak in Igbo or in John Hausa, mm. that is not the point. It's not about speaking like an American or a Canadian or a British or a Nigerian. That's not the point. Mm. The point of communication is to get the job done. Sure. And when you're communicating, you've got to ask, there are four types of communication we make, or you may be communicating to just pass information across. That's communicating to inform. Mm. You may be communicating to inspire an audience like I'm doing today. You're just mm. trying to bring inspiration to people. Yeah. You may be communicating to persuade, which is one of the most important types of communication anyone will need to learn. Mm. Whether it's a job interview, you're, you're pitching to investors to invest in your business, or you're trying to get your kids at home to do what you want, that's persuasion. Mm. And about bullying your way like most of us in Nigeria bully our kids. That's not persuasion. That's bullying. <laughs> Shocking them. I'm serious. Yeah. Mm. So when you find yourself using force on your child at home, it means that you lack persuasive skills. Mm. Mm. Because if you were trying to do, you couldn't come on an interview panel and bully the panelists. You mm. have to pay. So why are you bully the kids at home? And the last type of um, um, communication is about when you're trying to gain input from people. People. Yeah, input as well. Yeah. So mm. you need to know why you're communicating, and that will help you know um, how you go about what how you're doing. How you do it. Yeah. So me and for anyone listening today, one of the most important types of communication or communication skills you will need to build is ability to persuade people. It yes, is crucial. Because some people say, I can't sell. Some people say, I can't sell. I can't I'm do this. Can't, if you're a man that people can sell, you can, can sell a movie to you. And they keep saying, and I true. want to start selling already. I don't care. That is not true. The man that was able to convince a woman to marry him can sell. He sold marriage true. to that woman. Yeah? True. 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 You tasted that she, she agreed. So the man, that's the woman right that is listening to me today that has a job can sell. You sold to the company that right. you can and get a job from, you. and employed you. So yeah. anyone who has a job today went through an interview process. That's true. selling it, whether you recognize it or not. Not so anyone who is in marriage today, especially in Nigeria, where the man has to ask the woman to marry them. Once mm -hmm. you are able to convince a woman to marry you, in fact, yeah, for me, that is already. the greatest skills you can ever, the greatest See, selling you've ever made in your life, convincing that is my the, lifetime. the woman of your dreams to marry yeah. you. I mean, that is the greatest um, sales you can ever make. I, I, I can tell life. you, Santa, most of the time, the men don't even have anything to use to attract the woman physically. It's all just the air and in their mouth. So you are, you are even supposed to be the number one mm. um, uh, marketing manager for your mm. family. Mm. <laughs> and that, take, that will take me after... I summarized my journey so I can just spend the next 15 minutes talking yes. some fundamental lessons to the audience today. And yeah. that takes me, I will talk about it then, limiting beliefs. What we mm. say to ourselves, like, oh, I'm not a salesperson. Oh, I, I'm not good with relationships. Oh, mm. not that works well for me. Oh, Nigeria mm. is such a horrible place to Nigeria is bad. Oh, me is terrible. Oh, yeah. nobody. The moment we begin to say these things to ourselves, what we, we need to understand the impact we are making on the brain. The brain just shuts down. Just down. Mm. And nothing works from that moment. True. So after my this stuff, we, we talk about limiting beliefs and how to take care of those kind of mm. things. How to turn limiting beliefs to like liberating truth. Yeah. I like that. Liberating truth. truth. I like and, that. And yeah. moving yourself yeah. from limiting beliefs to liberating truth as well. Yeah. So, and that was how we got Del Carnegie to Nigeria eventually. Mm. It's not always been a smooth sail, but we are happy with the work we are doing. So Most fine. people on your platform may never have heard about us because we engage for companies. And if work, your company hasn't brought Del Carnegie to work for them, you may not have heard. 
Even mm. if we have um, a Dale Carnegie, we deal from middle to senior management level. So it's a likely it's, it's likely that a lot of people on this platform may not have heard about all yeah, sure. as well. I, yeah. I, I even I, I, I knew that a lot of people didn't know you except those a few ones that have been in your training and like yeah. I, I wouldn't like even though for Neyu, I wouldn't too. Yeah. I would yeah. so a lot of people, yeah. but maybe could that be because maybe the the, the commercial is not competitive competitive enough? I don't want to say competitive. Uh, I don't want to use that word. I would say the pricing is up is a bit upscale. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So companies will bring us in at the level they think they, that yeah. kind of cost yeah. or price makes sense. So mm. my managers and above. That, that's but, but are there, are there, are there plans? Are there plans for for SMEs? You know, individual. Uh, yes, I would say to the extent that COVID nineteen has happened. Exactly. So the taking which we have started, I delivered an online program. It was actually a two hour session, but that was why I was a, I was running late. A yeah. communication skill uh, training. So mm -hmm. when we bring that online, it was by company. I would bring that online. People here can afford to pay maybe like 30, 40 K, maybe about to attend. That, that's a that's typical funny. Carnegie program that we have in the in classroom program, a two day communications training will cost you about 195,000 naira. So, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. But mm -hmm. that's not why we are here. We will, uh, maybe when we have. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure you definitely have something in 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 plans for 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 uh, you know our listeners that are in this category of between that you said between thirty and forty. We'll discuss about that later. Yeah. So you can continue with the points. Um. Okay. Yeah. So that's the journey we have had with Dale Carnegie so far. So the moment I brought Dale Carnegie, even people who wouldn't talk to me before with my local brand were more than happy to engage. I can mm. remember a couple of CEOs that we have trained. A mm. former governor of Lagos State, we trained him on public speaking. So a, 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 for a past governor of Lagos State. So we mm. have coach, ex -co governors, senior politicians, senior executives, either one-on-one -on -one coaching or um, through classroom stuff like, let me, mm. let me call him Neo. You know, me, you do, you know, like <laughs> group work like we did with him. So okay. can we say can we say that because you were persistent, you 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 put you went through the wall and you smashed it down. You know you were able to. I, I, it wasn't just about the persistence. I think it was the value I was communicating in, in my value my, was the value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, I would say no matter how difficult things might be, if we're able to communicate value, obstacles begin to crash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whether it's an interview, if you if you've gone for several interviews and you haven't landed that job, you need to mm. come and ask yourself, what value, what do they consider value that I'm not communicating? And it value is. not from the angle of the speaker, but from yeah. who is listening. Mm. Um, so value is not because a lot of time we spend time in creating what we call value, but nobody is buying. It means that value, I'm talking about value here in terms of the marketplace. Mm. Be a valuable member of your family, a valuable member to God. Exactly. That's what I wanted to go to. How do you add value in the family? I'm talking about value in the marketplace. Okay. But for you to bring value to the marketplace, you've got to first be asking, what does the market want? Want. And mm. that's where you channel your effort towards. Mm. But it's a bit different. Value in the family is about value. You know what I mean? Value now in terms of um, behavior. behavior, values in terms of, you know, core values here. Mm. So as a family, you decide, like I chose with my wife together with my children to decide what do we want to be known for as a family. Mm. We talk about things like kindness. I mm. tell my children that the world won't always be kind to you, but we want to show kindness in every way. It's we people. Can. Fantastic. Yeah. So we have a set of values that guide what we do. So, mm. so this is what we call value. So mm. value in the family is different from value in the market. In business. Mm. We need to differentiate that. Yeah. Value yeah. you bring to your friendship, friends, friendship. is mm. different from value you bring to the marketplace. So I'm talking about value in the marketplace. Marketplace, yeah. Whether mm. you go for an interview, you're pitching to investors, 
you've got to be asking, what did they consider value? Because it's value people pay for. It's mm. not your, your credentials. Yeah, the credentials you have help you build brand value. It helps mm. you, build, but on the parts of the person, yeah, the credentials help you build brand. Mm. But brand in itself, it's not enough. You, yeah. gotta, you have to build and be communicating value as, as seen from the mm. end of the listener or the person who is buying. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's where we have been. So that's the work we have been doing with, um, with companies in Nigeria is been majorly the blue chip companies and, and the rest of them. Okay. Uh, after this section, I will share with everyone here what I'm up to that mm. we're start by the end of this month that yeah. they can personally benefit from. If you're not able okay. to assess your Carnegie training, and those are the things you can do to improve your life. Thank so let you. me wrap up in mm. a minute, yeah? Okay. By okay. sharing the other things that I have planned to share today. No, before um, before you share those other ones, I also want okay. to ask you because okay. of your journey of you as a child, you know, you also advise parents not to, you know, to give up on any child to try and you yeah. know and all that. How about how about when when a parent financially is handicapped? You know, you you were moved from a school in Delta to a move to a school in Lagos. You had to change school for you to mm. realize that to discover your person. What other what other things can parents do? You know, do you feel based on your experience? Do you feel parents can do to see a child that is struggling to see how mm. to help that child? Not really, you know, when they are not financially buoyant for what they desire. Let me clarify, Ronke. Um, yes. Sir. I'm, I feel personally blessed. I came from a place where I was blessed to have a very rich father. Okay. So maybe okay. in his time in Delta, probably one of the top 10 at the time. Okay. okay. But I can also tell you that some of the things you may consider blessings can become a handicap. So that was mm. my, my dad was rich and need to work hard. Mm. So when I got to Lagos, all those privileges were stripped off. Probably that was one of oh. the, the turning points really. Mm. Yeah, so there's something we call intensifiers, and I'm speaking to parents here. Intensifier mm. in English, let me explain for those of us who are not very con con conversant. Intensifier is like when you say, I am sick. You're not saying, mm. I am really sick. The really is an intensifier. Yeah. When you say to your wife or your spouse, I love you. When you put, I really, really love you, yeah. that really is an intensifier. So people have to learn how to use whatever life has dished at them as an intensifier. Mm. Whether mm. they are good or things that look really bad, yeah? Mm. You can turn them to become an intensifier. Mm. I can tell you about someone like Tony Lumelu, for example, he's a popular man in Nigeria. I know mm. him. He lost his father as a teenager. I am very conversant with his story from a mm. really, very poor home. Mm. But mm. he used that background, difficult background as an intensifier to say, I'm going to build my life that my family yeah. will go through what I went through. As went a child. through. Mm. Why yeah. someone like me did not find the need to work hard as a child? Because the question is, if your father had seven houses on one street, and this was the case with me, what mm. are you working hard for? <laughs> you have a, a fleet of 10 cars, mm. one, six boys, one, it, I, can, I, can get, I can lay hold on one. Yeah. So you will need to understand. So it's not always about the money. Mm. Yeah. And one of the things I have found that God is so gracious that regardless of whatever level we find ourselves in life, mm. there is some place we will thrive. Mm. So if you're on income as a parent of 5 million per annum, there is a good school at 5 million per annum. True. True. If you have an income of one million, whether you believe it or not, there is a school you will find for a one million naira income that will still give you quality education. True. One of the problems we have, which takes me again to lesson number five, is money matters. But mm. people don't understand frugality. I said my mom helped me in one aspect of my education. In that yeah. aspect, my dad was impatient. My dad, mm. the other one, as rich as he was was the most frugal human being I have ever seen. Mm, mm. So now, even if I see 10 million naira sitting in my account, that's how I'll be looking at it, and the 10 million will be looking at me. You may look at me at the CEO of Dale Carnegie Nigeria and all the things that I do. Yes, I'm not by any means with all sense of humility. I have not been broke in the 22 years I've been working. I don't know mm. what 
means. Mm. Not because mm. I have earned the biggest monies. I mm. have one car for ten for ten years. Friends, you sir. I've used you know what? I said our friendship will have to continue. I've used one car for ten years. One. Wow. One no, car. I'm not your friend again. One car. <laughs> that uh, one car for ten years. Wow. Yes. Why? Why? Be because the point is why. The question is why change it. Mm. Mm. I bought a brand new Prado in 2010. Mm. March. It's never broken down. Mm. Never given issues. Am I changing <laughs> because what Adiroka will see when she sees me? Mm. I want to know, like when I'm broke and crying in the night, Adiroka won't be there to help to bail me out. So why mm. do we spend time in Nigeria trying to please the fellow who doesn't care about our well-being anyway? Mm. So mm. that's the point. The car serves me and still serves me really very well. Wow. Well, it? I have money yeah. saved up already. My son is due to go to university in four years, and that mm. point is done. I've saved yeah. up money for his entire university education in Canada already. Mm. So mm. I know my friends that are going to be crying. Where am I going to spend? Get money. Oh, this is September. School fees is due. The money mm. you should have used to save up for the student's education. You're using it to buy luxury cars and showing off in Lagos. Mm. It's about priorities. Mm. It's about value. Mm. Yeah, true. So that's true. what it is. Yeah. Mm. That's what mm. it is. I will white the car of it because if it's too good, I like it's that. Really good. And then that brings me to what we're talking about. When all the things you have, your education, the cars, the house is stripped away from you, who are you? Mm. So yeah. are we, why am I buying that car? Is it about is that what makes who you are? Hmm. Yeah. I will yeah. say, are you comfortable like I am today to say, well, I don't know what impression people will have about me. So yeah. I'm gonna wear my my designer suit because of yeah. I like mm -hmm. to dress well in Lagos. Me will tell you, for example, I would never get into a classroom without a yeah. pair. Nice. Going to, yeah, is that so? Yes, yes. It is. Not always wear tights, but you will not catch me in Lagos Monday through Sunday, whether I'm in the classroom or not, without suits. But mm. the truth, they are not always designer suits. I just like to look good. <laughs> yeah. So why no, do you don't want to... yourself because yes. you see, Mr. Patrick, always is you just I assume am. that he's wearing a Gucci, Giorgio Armani suit and all that. Yeah. He might be. Our yeah, brother, yeah. I've built my brand. So when you yeah. see me in a jacket, you probably think this is a $2 jacket. Mm. That jacket is just $200. Wow. You may mm. not know, but I look Brad, good. Do you, do, you, do you do sales? I teach sales, so I sell. No, I mean, do you buy sales? Sales products? Products on sales? Trust me, I live abroad. We know when there are sales and we go and do the, <laughs> I the, like that. We go and do bargain, bargain, bargain shopping. You know? I mean, come on. You one of, Let me tell you one of the things I say. Mm -hmm. yeah? Even if you don't need that money, mm -hmm. that extra $100 I will spend or save yeah, can pay yeah. for someone. True. That's how True. I look at money. True. Yeah? I, I've never seen money True. as resource to be spent, but mm -hmm. rather resource to be invested. Mm. I have a part of land. I just an example. I bought in mm. like in I started paying for it. I paid for it. They gave us like five year window to pay for it. The value mm. was 20 million from 2009 to 2013. Mm. In, the last, in the last I oh, yes. yes, in the last how many in the last two, three months, people mm. have been asking. Three sets of people have come to me to come and pay a hundred and twenty mm. million for that plot of mm. land. Mm. And I'm not willing to sell. So mm. that twenty million I could have used to buy two cars at a time. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I have a hundred and twenty million saved somewhere mm. simply because I chose to delay what they call delayed gratification. I, agree. I chose to give away how you feel and look at me when you see my Porsche car. Yeah. But when I sleep, I sleep deep and well. I used to say I sleep like a baby until my wife reminded me babies wake up every other hour. <laughs> but what I think is that when I sleep, I don't wake up until seven. Yes, hours. don't get worried. I all have to care. I have no worry yeah. because financially, I'm not. I, I, I see why he is in love with you because 
we we used our TV and the, the, that TV, according to the gist, we got it even before we got married. The TV is like eleven years old. He just changed it. <laughs> Even when the pressure was so much from his younger ones, from his elder ones, I should, he refused to. He said there is no point. The TV was not giving him issues. But just when there was a need for it, after like 11 years, it was, that's when he changed it. He said he got the TV 20, 2008. I mean, yes, 2008. That's when he got the TV. People have like, got to If it's not broken, why change it? We have all got to choose financial independence or security yeah. over status. Mm. Mm. People you're like trying to impress don't even care anything about you. Let's be sure. honest. Mm. So you're on that highway and you're looking, you wind down and see if anybody is watching you. It's just for a fleeting moment. True. True. Why you sacrifice your future for that? Mm. As I'm mm. here, God forbid anything happens to me. The truth is, none of my kids is going to suffer. I've mm. Taking care of their future. Amen. A big amen to that. A big amen. I say, I say big amen to that. Yes. Yeah. So we need to yes. realize that. For me, it, again, it, it, it comes to what we consider value. Yeah. Yeah. Financial uh, security is uppermost on my mind. My mm. dad eventually stopped working at 65. He took ill. Mm. And doctor said if he wanted to leave, we were still very young at the time. He will never work a day in his life anymore. And mm. he lived to 85 years. So it means that he did not wow. work for the last 85 years of his house. Yeah, of his life. fantastic. The awesome. We, awesome. The reason he lived and went to school was because he already had a lot of investment properties. Mm. Mm. Awesome. And I said to anyone here listening to me that, God forbid, we pray for long life, but the reason there is insurance is life happens. Yes, so true. Anything happens to you and your children or your family cannot maintain at least 50% of the standard they enjoyed by your life, you have not done well as a parent. Wow. Mm. Yes. If anything I'm taking to you, notes myself. Taking if notes. anything happens to you and your children won't enjoy at least at a minimum 50% of the standard they enjoy while you were alive, you, uh, I don't want to use a strong word to say you have failed. You haven't done mm. well. Mm. You haven't done well. Mm. And one of the things I say to people, when people tell me, oh, but how do I pay for a school? And, like, and I say to people that God is so gracious that regardless of what level you are in life, there is a standard mm. of suited for that level of income. The okay. problem with how financially starts when we start to live at a level or two or three above where we are. And that is mm. the story of many people in Nigeria. Because we're trying to impress people, you are moving your kids to that school in Ikoyi or in Leki. When you know your financial means, you, you don't even have any business living in that location. Area. Mm. Yeah, and all of that. We need to understand mm. that life is a ladder. And until I climb to that, I don't have any business living to like move. those words. Yeah. Yes, and one true. of the things I do is that I even live personally like people who are like five steps below where I am. Mm. In terms of that's wow. how I'm able to save up money for the future. Mm, mm. So when, what do people do when they get a bonus from work? They change their car. They change their TV set I'm, or something. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Yeah. I'm and a spontaneous say, buyer, but I'm learning. I'm getting better. If you get promoted at work, at least try for the next one year, live on the same income you were before. Like you've been living before. Save mm. that differential at least for the next one year. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so can yes, we move sir. on and begin to wrap yes. up? Yes, so now we can just give me just a few things on. You have already told people the five points they need to learn. So let's talk about, as we are rounding off right now, let's talk about your your well, your, your plans for us. You know, now you are trying to come okay. into our... Let me, let me our say, enemies. yes. in as much as I have said all I have said today, they won't be the easiest thing to do. Change I, as good as they are for us. Change is not as good as change is. Change is not the easiest thing to do. It is. It's very difficult. Yeah. It is. So, it is so let me tell us, our people listening, on how to bring about change in your life. Yeah. Mm. So the first thing you have to do first is that you have to. I think at the recent conference, I talked about some of these terms. You have to have what we call. Um, I think I noted some of this. Sorry, give me one minute. Yeah. yeah. You have to go through what we call constructive discontent. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that until your 
if until you become uncomfortable with where you are, nobody changes. So you have to peel some level of serious pain to want to change. So if you're comfortable, you really can't change. So you have to go through what psychologists call constructive discontent, telling yourself, you know what, I'm tired of this level. I'm tired of this level. This marriage is not working. We are always broke. We can't continue like this. Until you get to that level of pain, you won't plan a change. Yeah? So that's the first thing we have to know. Two, you've got to deal with the limiting beliefs that are stopping you. I've talked about them before. Yeah, yes, you did. Oh, well, yes. I would never be able to save. Well, yeah. I would never Thank be you. able to, to yes. remember people's names. I'm not yes. going to sell him. I don't know how to network. Those yeah. are limiting beliefs. You've got to const- reconstruct your limiting beliefs to become what we call liberating truth. So, for mm-hmm. example, to say, instead of saying, I don't know how to save, you begin to say, savings is good, and I will give it a shot. Reach out, yeah. yeah. Keep trying. It may be difficult, but I will try. Yeah, so, yeah. You, you know I'm saying? I don't know how to save. Savings may be difficult, but, but I, I will try. try. Mm. The more you say that to yourself, through the next things I will say, which is affirmation. Mm, the positive ones, yeah. You begin to find yourself becoming that person. So yeah. once you have done that, the very next thing before change will happen is that you have to go through a process of visioning. Mm. I made up my, my mind, even as a university student, that what I wanted to do was be a knowledge worker, share impact, knowledge. Impact, impact knowledge. Not yeah. everyone early enough in life was able to come up with a vision. But yeah. even if you haven't, it's never too late to have a vision. Like they say, the day you realize it is your morning, like my dad would say, then begin to act like it is morning. Yes. yes. So to catch a new vision, a vision, people are like, well, how do you write a vision? A vision is not a very difficult thing to do. Just remember that a vision has three attributes. The yeah. first one is that the- you put it in, you, it has to be powerful, something mm-hmm. bigger than what you are. Yeah. So if you're currently on 1 million per annum, saying I want to become 1.5 million naira man, it does not powerful enough. Yeah. So, but moving from 1 million to 5 million, that's powerful. That is, yeah. Moving from 10 million to 15 million, that's yeah, powerful. That's yeah. But to shift from 11, one, 10 to 11, that's not powerful. Yeah. Moving from 20 to 50, that's powerful. So yeah. attribute number one, the vision has to be powerful. powerful. Something bigger than you currently are. Something that will challenge you. Number yeah. two, you have to put it in the present tense. Don't say, I will make one 10 million next year the the brain does not connect with the future mm. Mm. Connects with it now yeah so if mm. you're saying i will make 50 million you got to be saying i make 50 million i make yeah. it stay like you already make it now yeah here, now. now the brain yeah. cannot and does not relate with the future the future mm. and now now mm. yeah. number yes. three for you don't put it like in uh, how will I put it? You don't state your vision in terms of what you want to stop. You mm. state it in terms of what you want to become. So you don't say things like, I want to stop smoking. So you rather say, I am a smoke-free smoke. individual. Yeah. Uh, smoke-free. Instead of saying, I want to stop spending money anyhow, you're saying, mm. I spend money prudently. Mm. So it's in the Use the positive ones, yeah. In the, the brain it's again not relate with the negative. Negativity, yeah. Those three attributes, once you say that, to be, make that re- vision become a reality, you have to go through a process of affirmation. Mm. Three times every day. I am a 50 millionaire man. Mm. Yeah? Yeah, you say to yourself, as you say this thing often, the brain will suffer from what psychologists call cognitive dissonance. Mm-hmm. Your I'm a 50 millionaire man, but uh, your brain is saying to you, ah, seriously, but I can only see 500 bucks in my account. Yes. That's what they call dissonance. Dissonance mm. is saying something is not right here. Mm. You know, I am a 50 millionaire man. Account is showing 500 bucks. Yeah. And until you go through cognitive dissonance, it means your vision isn't just simply big enough. Yeah. 
So that's how you know about that. We we'll, we'll, we'll definitely need to have it back on the show. <laughs> If you're, if you're not going through cognitive dissonance, it simply just means that that vision you've created is not big enough. It should challenge you, make you yeah. based on the possibility of you being able to achieve that as mm. well. But as you do, there's something the psychologists have also proven to be true, that as you go through a process of affirmation, after 26 to 30 days, your brain internalizes that new you. Mm, and and accept you know, it. The things that you used to accept before become abnormal. When you mm. find yourself wanting to spend that money and you're saying, why do, do I really need to spend this money? Mm. You, you find yourself now it's because fine. of you yeah. internalized that new you. Why is this so? Everything you do in your life is a habit. Mm. And until you move that vision into the subconscious part of your brain, you really can become. Sure. Once that vision resides in your conscious parts, your conscious brain, which is very logical, will tell you, oh, God, forget this thing. You know you are not. You know you cannot because it's yeah. at that conscious level. So you've got to learn to transfer that vision from the conscious brain to the unconscious brain. And the only way to do that is through a, a repetition, a process of repetition, mm. repeating that affirmation over and over. And finally, one thing that helps that happen fast is what we call, and that's how we end this section, what we call in psychology, emotional anchors. Mm. Anything, anytime anything challenges you, ask yourself, what is that one difficult thing I was able to do in my life in the past? Mm. For, me, for example, I used to fail a lot in my school exams and I turned around to become a scholar. So I always tell myself, well, if I could crack my physics and algebra, then I can do this. Mm. If I'm going after to sign on a new client and they're posing mm. me, and I say to myself, if I could convince a whole Dale Carnegie to hand me the rights to operate the franchise in Nigeria, who is now this company that won't listen to me? And, and that, that reminds me of David and Goliath. That was what they did. That's the point. So one of the things churches, the spirit churches do is that they are not able to explain to us the science beyond behind some of these scriptures. That's exactly what David, David was using emotional reminders. Reminders. Yeah. If I could slay the bear and the lion, yeah. who, who are that? you? Who are you? Yeah. So and every one of us has emotional anchors. There's something we have all done that was difficult. Mm. So and we conquered it. To conquer, you want to conquer something difficult. All you need to do is remind yourself. So I have a list of five emotional anchors that I use. So when you think through your life, you will find emotional anchors. Mm. One is enough. Mm. You have to remind yourself each time your brain tells you you can't do this. Tell your brain, I did this. Therefore, My director is telling me we are running out of time. <laughs> and the last thing, therefore, you need to know in terms of live becoming who you want to be with your life, living your purpose and, be, and make, seeing them come true, you have to have execution plan. Mm. So you have to have someone to hold you accountable. Most of us, the reason we do well on the job is because there's a manager who appraises us, who queries us. The yeah. question as I end up with this session is who we question you? Mm. Who, mm. who are you accountable to? Who are you accountable to? Without Very accountability, key. nobody yeah. really goes fine in life. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I mean, we, have, we, we, we have to. We have to find another time to call you back. There's so many things I personally have jotted and I've noted, and I know that a lot of my friends listening right now have done the same. And I'm so grateful, sir, for honoring. Once again, let me just ask the final, which is very critical for me. Where does God come in place in out of all these skills, accomplishments, failures, and all that? Where, where, where? Tell people. Okay. You to you, who is God? Let me say one part people don't know is that I'm a mini, I'm I'm I don't I'm not a pastor, but I'm a minister. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um I teach, I taught in a church for seven years as a, a school teacher, a Sunday school teacher. A school teacher. I, I also was part of those who we teach people who wanted to become ministers and church workers. Mm. Bible college and all yeah, of that. management. Mm. But my take personally, I'm a big believer in God. Mm. Uh, but I'm very pragmatic in terms of 
Hi, I see God. Mm. I'm one of those that believe that God is in charge. God will take control. God, mm. I think, has put Godness in us. In us. So yes. that God-like power, he has given us to say, I give you power. You go and deliver. Make, go yeah. and conquer. Go and dominate. Go and multiply. Yes. I have, as a person, recognize, I recognize that God person in me mm. that allows me to exercise godly powers. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm, that, I do. I do. I also believe that we are all here for a purpose. I do purpose, not yeah. Any one of us is here just to come and occupy space and time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a reason why. There's here. a reason. Yeah. Some people will say, How do I discover that reason? I'm saying, inherent in number of us, God has yeah. given us skills, talents, and passion. Yeah. Some of those things speak to what our purposes are. Mm -hmm. God can give you a purpose and not give you the passion or what it takes to it. enable it. Yeah. The fact that you haven't discovered what the purpose is doesn't mean you don't have one. Mm. Make, mm. It, make that very clear. The fact that you haven't yeah. discovered your purpose does, does not, not mean you don't it. have it. Mm. So begin to, there is an exercise yeah. I go through with people to let them discover what their passion, their purpose, and all of those are. Yeah. There's a mm. platform that takes me to what you were asking earlier. Yes. Platform let's let's round off with that. Let's ex, round off with ex, that. Ex, Exceedculture.com. The website is not called Exceedculture.com. The website is not up, but I encourage people, like at my last conference, you can go on any social media platform, be it Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or Twitter. Just follow exceedculture.com. Yes, exceedculture.com. When we launch at the end of the month, you will get to see what we do. We are big on helping people discover. Mm. To work for a company, we work with people to let them become the best in their careers. If you'll be working and you think time is up, you want to do your own thing, we help you on a journey to start your own business. Mm. Or whether you work for a company or you, work, you want to do your own business, we think they have to be driven from who you are as a person mm. first. Yeah. So you have mm. to discover your purpose. So it's your purpose that will help you determine which company most align with my purpose. Mm. What kind Business will allow me live my purpose, because if you don't answer the question of purpose by discovering your purpose, that is where frustration comes in. That's where burnout comes in. For mm. me, the difference between work and play, I can stay here for the rest of today mm. because I'm passionate about what I do. <laughs> and your work and your life intertwine. Yeah, mm. you always meet burnout. You will always feel some sort of frustration on the job and things like that. Thank you. Ah, uh, how can I thank you enough? Thank you so much, sir. So much. So, if you go to exceedculture.com, they, um, it's Mr. Not, Patrick, it's not, it's not live yet the website, but okay, it's a website. at exceedculture, maybe you should put on the handle at exceedculture. Okay. That's okay. the social media handles anywhere you're on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. The handles are up already. So okay. people can follow us so that we are having a digital lunch. Okay. We have like a, a section, free section like this. People can, for two days, people can sign on to join. So they can start to pay. They can mm. go free and experience what this is about, really. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. If you, I want to go to church, to go to church. If you have been blessed, but no. <laughs> no. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Patrick. I'm grateful. I am honored. I cannot thank you enough. I called you. It was even called you just a few days ago, and you gave the honor to be on the show. You gave your word. And I like the fact, like I told my husband, I like the fact that you didn't just give me your word. You were also with me all through the journey of publicity till you came on the show. And that's a big honor for me. I said, I like when my guests understand what we are trying to do. You know, like, I just want to show up, but I'm trying to, you know, tell people that it can be whoever they want to be. If this person, because the program is all about inspiration, if this person can, like you said, remember your past, your achievements and all that, if you can do it, then you can. There's no impossibility for anyone. I am grateful all the way, all the way, all the way. It's not a problem. It's my pleasure. Anytime. Anytime you need my support. Feel free to, to let me know. 
one of the last missions, one of the things, let me just say my final word as I leave the stage is that I think um, one of the things I know the struggles I have been through as a child, I know what the shame is. So one of the things we even offer at a seed culture, we offer is supporting parents who are struggling with parenting. To their children. To help mm -hmm. them with that journey to understand. I have been there. So I'm not teaching you theory. I have been there. I have been mm -hmm. able to reinvent my life. But I know mm -hmm. not many people have been able to. I see some people I grew up with. I look at them with pity. They were never able to turn around their life. So mm -hmm. it's possible. And so one of the things I'm always quick to do as much as I can, not all the time, if I'm able to support in any way I can, typically, Dale Carnegie and all the things we do, we build for them. But we also recognize there is a place for giving back. And then yeah. we, if, we, if, if we have the time bandwidth to, to support that, we will do that because trust me, I'm not unmindful that someone would have listened to me today and there's just that one thing that they will run with that, yeah. that, they, that will make a difference in their life. In their lives, yeah. And with something also that what I said may have giving them a solution or a gateway. Yeah, to what they have been battling with, yeah. As a Christian, I'm, 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 I'm mindful of that. So we try to support causes like you are. Thank you. Thank you. Because you are not charging your audience for this, at least not. No. So I'm saying. I'm only begging them to bring advert for me. I have not seen any. I'm begging them. Okay, it will come. So keep up with your work. This is not um, a, a dead end. So don't yeah. give up. Like, no. <laughs> yes, fight. that's lesson learned. Yes. Think that if you believe in something like you do, keep fighting. Thank I you. I said to you that one of the reasons I accepted to do this, I saw the the way I, you were burning with with passion for this stuff. Oh, thank you. Wow. Thank you. You know. Wow. So keep up the the work. The thank money you, will come. Just thank keep going. Amen. Yeah. And thank you so much, sir. I'm so grateful. I'm honored. Thank you. I'll let you out of the studio so that I can round off so I don't take any of your time. I know you have to go back to your session. Please help me tell mommy. I give her plenty of good, sir. Shall we hear? Shall we hear? Thank you. I will help your wife and the children too as well. We're I'm here. grateful. Thank you. He says thank you. He says thank you too. I don't want him to show. Let him go away. It's my, it's my time to shine. Let him go. <laughs> thank you, sir. Bye. I'll All buzz right. you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm grateful. I'm honored for everyone that came online. I want to specifically give a big shout out to you, Ronke. Ronke, thank you. For every of my show, Ronke is always online. Ah, uh ah, -uh, Ronke. Ah, uh, thank you, Jerry. Take me. God bless you. You're always online. You have to put that your name well. That your name is hard for me to pronounce. That your son name. You have to, I thought you have to teach me how to pronounce it. Thank you so much, Ringe, for being all of my shows. I always see her online. Thank you. For everyone that shared the post, Shola, Kimbo, Ife, all of you, I see you. Um, Adele K, I see all of you that shared the post. I'm so grateful. Thank you for even all the past posts too as well. Taiwo and um, Taiwo, the two Taiwos, they're always sharing. Everyone that came online, blow, blow, everyone. I appreciate you guys so much. Everyone that go back to watch on YouTube, I am grateful. All my friends from Aparta Memorial. Mr. Patrick you, you is one of us, so he's an alumni of Aparta. He finished from the 1998 set, and we are so proud of him. I went to Aparta, and he's very proud student of Aparta. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm grateful. Please go to at a seed culture. Dot com go to their um instagram page and follow and so that you can get the updates on the upcoming you know group they want to do trainings for parents that are struggling with their children and for individuals that want to change from their careers to become their own business owners or for those that want to grow up in their careers as well we can't all be entrepreneurs but we can achieve our dream and that's the focus of this this show everybody that comes on the show has a story to share you have a story to share and one day it might not be on my show we are going to share your story and we're going to share the success of it by the mercy and the grace of God. And I call to you this evening, if you are battling with anything, know that there's someone that loves you so much. There's someone that has you right in the center of his heart and is calling on you that this struggle, you can't do it all alone. Like what Mr. Patrick said in the beginning, nobody is self-made. We all came from a source and that is God. God will put people in your path to make your life better for you. And so if you need a change, if you need that direction, why don't you call on the name Jesus and it will turn things around for your good and it will turn that light to shine on you again. It is not about them, it's about you. God bless you. And thank you so much for staying. Please go to my YouTube page, Aderunke Onikpede. Please subscribe, like the videos. If you have feedbacks to share with me, 
please share with me my inbox, my emails. We'll review it together on how to make the show better. For adverts too, you can call me. There are different ways we can give you that advert publicity. My money is not competitive. Shikini money, just small, small money. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful weekend and see you all next week. I have an amazing guest for next week. Bye.